Hello everyone, today we are going to discuss about the ECG of left ventricular hypertrophy. We all know that left ventricular hypertrophy is a hypertrophy that is say increase in mass and increase in bulk of the myocardium of the left ventricle that occurs in response to the increase in afterload that is the increase in the blood pressure in an any person. So there is, if there is a chronic increase in blood pressure, the left ventricle has to contract against a higher pressure to eject the blood from left ventricle towards the aorta and due to this, uh, a compensatory mechanism develops for in order to compensate the work that is done by left ventricle against the blood pressure the left ventricle increases in size it increases in bulk and eventually left ventricular hypertrophy develops but as left ventricular hypertrophy develops it causes some changes in the ecg leads and these changes can be read by a practitioner in the 12 lead ecg and one can diagnose left ventricular hypertrophy from the changes that is seen in the different leads uh, of the ecg so let's see what are the changes that happens in left ventricular hypertrophy. To understand the changes that happens in the left ventricular hypertrophy, one has to understand that as left ventricle muscle increases, as left ventricle bulk increases, it increases the overall amplitude of electrical current directed towards the left side of the body. That is to say the chest leads lead B5, B6 and the limb leads uh, lead uh, AVL, lead AVL, lead B5, lead V6, all these leads uh, so uh, increase in electrical current uh, towards them. That is to say all these leads will show a prominent R wave. So we know that in ECG an R wave that is say a prominent upward deflection uh, always indicate the electrical current is flowing more towards that lead. So if there is a prominent R wave in lead B5, V6 and AVL, it indicates that the more of the current uh, is flowing towards the left side of the body. And this is one of the changes that occur in left ventricular hypertrophy. As well as if you look at uh, the leads on the right side of the body, that is to say lead P1, lead V2, these leads will show a prominent S wave or negative deflection because of left ventricular hypertrophy the majority of current is directed towards the left side of the body and that is to say a direction opposite to B1 that is why uh, they will show a S wave that is way much more deeper than normal. If we talk about the axis in case of left ventricular hypertrophy one has to understand that the axis of ECG in left ventricular hypertrophy is always normal so even in a patient with LVH the axis is normal because conventionally we measure axis in uh, coronal plane uh, one can see in, in this figure that we usually measure axis by comparing two leads uh, lead AVF and lead 1 so we compare and contrast uh, what is the electrical current in between lead 1 and lead AVF and that is the reason why we only compare the axis that occurs uh, in a coronal plane. So even in left ventricle hypertrophy as the thickness or bulk of the left ventricle increases this bulk uh, causes an more an increase in the amplitude of electrical current that is still directed towards the leftward and downward. So only the amplitude of R wave will increase in lead 1 as well as lead AVF but if you compare uh, and if you take a ratio between lead 1 and lead AVF the axis is always between somewhere between lead 1 and AVF which is also a normal finding so even in left ventricular hypertrophy uh, the axis uh, is normal uh, initially in the initial stages of learning ECG uh, one false notion can uh, come into the mind of a uh, early practitioner that right ventricular hypertrophy is associated with right axis deviation which is in fact correct but in a similar manner he can have a false pre preconception that left ventricular hypertrophy is associated with left axis deviation which is not uh, a correct understanding left ventricular hypertrophy does not cause left axis deviation uh, in left ventricular hypertrophy axis is still normal because we measure axis only in coronal plane and no matter how much the bulk of the left ventricle increases it is only going to add to the amplitude of electrical current towards uh, uh, lead b1 and b uh, b avf and, and the resultant is still somewhere between lead 1 and lead avf that's a lead towards lead 2 which is a normal finding now yeah, let's get back to the features of uh, left ventricular hypertrophy. So, 
So this is the cross section of the body uh, taken in transverse plane as compared with uh, coronal plane. So in transverse plane, one can see this is a normal heart and this is a left ventricle hypertrophied heart. So as the left ventricle hypertrophy occurs and the bulk of the left ventricle increases, uh, the overall amplitude of electrical current uh, moves towards posteriorly and towards left. And the leaves which can detect these changes are the chest leaves from V1 to V6. So as the amplitude of electrical current shifts towards left side and backward, the height of R wave in left-sided chest leads that is to say v5 and v6 the r waves becomes much more prominent whereas as the electrical activity moves away from uh, right-sided chest leads that is say v1 and v2 the depth of s wave increases in v1 and v2 and we use uh, these chest leads v1 and v5 or v6 for the diagnosis of left ventricular hypertrophy uh, and this criteria is called sokolo line criteria so you can see in this ECG, uh, this ECG is well different from a normal ECG. A normal ECG should not look like this. Uh, a normal ECG does not have this much deeper S wave in lead V1. And a normal ECG leads does not have this much taller R wave in V5. In fact, if we measure the R wave in lead V5 is 5, 10, 15, and plus 318 plus 2 uh, somewhere around 20 mm and if you look at the depth of s wave in lead p1 it is 5 10 15 20 and 23 mm and this is not normal the s wave should not be this deeper in lead v1 and if we uh, add this if you add s wave in v1 with r wave in v5 uh, it gives us 43 mm and the cutoff is somewhere around 35 mm. If you add S wave in V1 and R wave in either V5 or V6, whichever is taller, in this case S wave, R wave is taller in V5, so I have used V5. Had it been taller in V6, I would have used V6. So S wave in V1 plus R wave in V5 or V6, anything which is taller. If the sum gives more than or equal to 35 mm, then it is considered a left ventricular hypertrophy. And this criteria is called Sokolo Lion criteria. Now, uh, the changes not only occur in lead V1 and V5 or V6, uh, other uh, chest leads also detect some changes. Uh, the left sided uh, leads are avl as well so there is some changes that occurs in uh, avl as well and we compare uh, avl with v3 so this and this so as left ventricular hypertrophy occurs the height of r wave in avl increases and the depth of s wave in v3 uh, also increases and we compare the same we compare s depth of s wave with height of r wave so one can see in this ecg so this is lead 1, this is lead 2, this is lead 3, this is AVL, this is AV, and so this is AVR, this is AVL, this is AVF, this is V1, this is V2, this is V3, and we have to compare between AVL and V3. One can see the height of R wave in AVL is higher. This is 5 and 4 gives us 9 mm and let's look at lead v3 uh, by the time we go from v1 to v3 there should have a there should be a prominent r wave and um, the s wave should get smaller and smaller but if we look from v1 to v3 there's a minimal development in uh, height of r wave whereas s wave is still getting deeper and deeper so the depth of s wave is 5 10 15 uh, plus 3 18 plus 220 so this is 20 mm so if we add that if we add height of r wave in avl with height of s wave in v3 if it is more than 28 mm in males then it is considered as left ventricular hypertrophy if it is more than equal to 20 mm in females it is considered as left ventricular hypertrophy and in this case it is somewhere around 29 which is indeed uh, more than a 28 uh, cutoff area 
uh, may this ECG be of any male or female ECG definitely have a feature of left ventricular hypertrophy now besides that sometimes the changes of left ventricular hypertrophy is, are so obvious that you don't have to compare two ECG leads uh, let's see in this ECG uh, you can see that as we compare from lead P1 to P2, P3, P4, P5, P6 let's see lead V5 let's see the R wave of V5 R wave of V5 is so tall that it overlaps with the QRS complex of P4 R wave terminates somewhere around here and if you find out the height of R wave you can see it is 5, 10, 15 20 25 uh, 20 mm, somewhere 29 29 plus uh, 4 it is somewhere around 34 mm and the height of r waves should never be uh, that high in any person with normal uh, left ventricle so there's a single cut of uh, criteria if the height of r in lead p5 is more than equal to uh, 25 mm then it is considered as left ventricular hypertrophy. You don't even have to add the depth of S wave in uh, lead P1. There is similarly another criteria in which if there is an isolated height of R wave in lead AVL, uh, the, this lead in AVL, if the height of R wave in AVL is more than equal to 12 mm, then you don't even have to add the depth of s wave in lead v3 it is single shot uh, indicator of left ventricular hypertrophy so these are all different criteria and none of the single criteria is best for the diagnosis of left ventricular hypertrophy so if you look at each criteria the sensitivity of every criteria is somewhere around 60 and specificity is somewhere around 80 to 90. so no single criteria can be used uh, for the diagnosis of left ventricular hypertrophy as a clinical physician one must use all of these criteria to increase his or her sensitivity and specificity to revise uh, we look uh, uh, at the height of r wave in lead v5 or v6 whichever is taller and if it is more than 25 mm then boom that's a diagnosis of left ventricular hypertrophy uh, if it is not more than 25 mm then we add with the depth of s wave in lead v1 if the addition is more than 20, 35 mm then there's a diagnosis of left ventricular hypertrophy uh, you can also use uh, leads like AVL and lead V3 if the sum of it is more than uh, 28 mm in male and more than equal to 20 mm in female it's left ventricular hypertrophy if the height of AVL is more than 12 mm then you don't even have to look at uh, the depth of S wave it is an indicator of left ventricular hypertrophy so this shingle lead criteria where you look at the r wave of lead b5 b6 or r wave of avl these criteria are also sometimes called framing criterias. criteria and using r wave in lead avl and s wave v3 is called cornell's criteria and we already know height of r wave in lead v5 or v6 with depth of s wave in lead b1 um, is called the sokolo line criteria so that is it this is how you can diagnose cases of left ventricular hypertrophy on ecc thank you